Every photographer or videographer has heard that having a 50mm lens in your kit is super important. It's the nifty 50, right? But there is a huge jump between the super cheap 50mm f1.8 that most beginners go for and the big, fancy, and expensive 50mm f1.2 G Master. Well, this is the 50mm f1.4 G Master lens from Sony. And super exciting news, it's smaller, lighter, and less expensive than the other 50mm G Master, but the quality still kicks ass. So in this video, we're gonna dive into the 50mm f1.4, talk about the size, weight, and price versus the f1.2 version. We'll go over physical features and build quality. Of course, we'll talk about performance and image quality, and I'll give my personal experience and recommendation as to whether you should consider buying this lens for your kit. But before I talk too much, let's kick things off with a short example sequence so that you can see the image quality of this lens for yourself. Please enjoy. The following sequence was shot entirely on the Sony FX3 and the 50mm f1.4 G Master.
All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's dive into this lens by talking about the size, weight, and price of it. The 50mm f1.4 comes in at a weight of 516 grams or 18.2 ounces, it's 96mm or 3.7 inches long, and it has a 67mm filter thread. As for price, we're looking at $1299 US or $1799 Canadian. Comparatively, the f1.2 G Master is 778 grams or 27.2 ounces, 108mm or 4.3 inches long, and uses a 72mm filter thread, so it's a bit thicker too. It also also costs quite a bit more at $19.99 US or $25.99 Canadian. One of the interesting things about the size, weight, and layout of the f1.4 lens is that it lines up nearly perfectly with the 24mm and 35mm f1.4 lenses from Sony as well. So together they make a fantastic kit of prime lenses, allowing for switching out similar to the way that cinema lenses line up for easy switching too. Next, let's talk about the physical features and build quality of this lens. I am definitely starting to feel a bit like a broken record with these new Sony lenses since they all have similar features, but they are good features, so maybe that's a good thing. As far as the feel and balance, I thought it was great with any of the Sony full frame cameras that I have. It has a solid premium feeling construction with good materials and a great texture for the different rings and switches. This lens is dust and moisture resistant. All seams are sealed. Buttons and switches have silicone rubber gaskets and a gasket for the mount, though they did make sure to specify that it it is not fully water or dust proof. The front element has a fluorine coating to repel moisture, fingerprints, and oil. The focus ring is smooth to use and it's linear so you can perform repeatable focus pulls for video. It has a focus throw that I was quite happy with for both photo and video use. It has a dedicated aperture ring with both a D-click option and an aperture lock switch. This being the first time that we're seeing an aperture lock on a G Master Prime lens like we've seen on the zoom lenses. We have two customizable buttons and an autofocus manual focus toggle switch. Inside the lens we have a dual XD linear motor internal focusing which means that it's fast, silent, and super accurate keeping up with the newest Sony autofocus systems nicely. In my experience video autofocus is smooth and silent as I would want it to be and photo autofocus is snappy. I actually did one video clip where I walked towards the camera hoping that it would track me until I walked out of frame and then refocus on the plant in the foreground and it actually worked perfectly. Previous experience with shots like this has left me skeptical, but I was happy to see it work. We've also got an 11 blade circular aperture, which is greatly appreciated with that super wide f1.4 aperture to keep the bokeh smooth. But speaking of which, let's talk about the image quality and performance of this lens. Image performance, as you would expect out of a Sony G Master lens, is pretty fantastic. The wow factor was definitely there in a similar way to the F1.2 G Master when I used that, but without the heft and the price tag. For close focusing, this lens is nothing to write home about with a minimum focus distance of 41 centimeters or 16.2 inches. Definitely not a macro lens. Center sharpness at F1.4 is solid, but it gets even better at the sweet spot between F2 and F5.6. It starts to soften back off at F8, and it's quite a bit softer at the max of f16. And sharpness out near the corners falls off a little bit from the center, but it's pretty solid as well, and it still has the same sweet spot between f2 and f5.6. We've got a small amount of pincushion distortion if you want to turn off the in-camera corrections, but just don't, and then it's a non-issue. There is a decent amount of vignetting when we're shooting wide open at f1.4 that's even noticeable in the viewfinder on the camera, even with the compensation on, but stop down to f2, it clears itself up. There is the possibility that this could be addressed with camera firmware or the proper profiles for photo software once they come out, but as it currently stands, we're hanging out in vignette town when we're at 1.4. But speaking of that f1.4 aperture, the bokeh on this lens looks fantastic, with beautiful smooth out of focus areas and really pleasing diffusion in the highlights. The tone and contrast are great and line up really nicely with other G Master lenses to make them easily interchangeable, and of course with that f1.4 aperture, you have the ability to shoot in super low light situations as long as you're okay with a razor thin depth of field. Flaring, color fringing, and chromatic aberration are all super well handled and cause absolutely no problems for me in a practical sense. Wide open at f1.4, there is some longitudinal chromatic aberration causing 
having a kind of pink and blue fringing before and after the focal plane respectively, but you really have to punch in to even notice it. Practically, it basically had no effect on my images. All that nitpicking aside, the biggest issue with this lens that actually affected me in a practical way was the focus breathing. Similar to the f1.2 version, this lens has a pretty hefty focus breathing problem that can cause issues, especially for video shooters. Someday, this may be a non-issue when all Sony cameras have the lens breathing compensation built into them, but when shooting with my Alpha 1 or my FX3, I still have to deal with this, and it can be quite a bit of a bummer on an otherwise fantastic lens. So with all that said, let's talk about my experience with this lens and my recommendation for you if you're considering this as an option. The bottom line here is that I really liked using this lens, and I think it's a fantastic alternative to the 50mm f1.2. A 50mm is a great prime lens to have in your kit because it has a pleasing, natural look to it. What I mean by that is that it doesn't have an extreme closeness look like a wide-angle lens, but it also doesn't have an extreme compression look of a telephoto. 50mm, or the Nifty 50, is probably the most recommended lens for people to pick up as their first prime lens for that reason. But the Nifty 50 that people are usually referring to for beginners is the $250 50mm f1.8, so this $1,300 price tag might be hard to swallow if you're just getting into photography or video. That being said, I do think this is a significant upgrade from the 50mm f1.8, and therefore a great lens for enthusiasts or professionals who have a 50mm size hole in their prime lens lineup, but don't want to go all in with that larger and significantly more expensive f1.2 version. I personally love the size and weight of this lens, and the performance was definitely worthy of that G Master title, in my opinion. And having that f1.4 aperture available to you definitely allows for some beautiful and unique looking shots that will help you stand out from the crowd, especially with this performance. I really do wish that there could have been more done to help with that focus breathing problem, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker, especially if you're just into photography and not doing much for video. Sigma did also beat Sony to the punch by announcing their own 50mm f1.4 that's more similar to the size of the f1.2 Sony in between the two Sony lenses in weight, but it's significantly less expensive, coming in at $850 US or $1189 Canadian. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to test the Sigma yet, so I can't speak to the image quality, but if you let me know down in the comments if you want to see a comparison video, I'll see what I can do. But like I said, if you're an enthusiast who's looking for a 50mm with G Master quality but don't want to splurge for the price of the f1.2, version, or you don't like how big and heavy it is, then I am more than happy to recommend this as an alternative. But as always, I want to hear from you. What do you think of the new f1.4 50mm Sony G Master? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, and on your way down, hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.